Hey everybody, I wanted to do a real quick video on one of the most common problems that I see out there. Um, on forums, on Facebook, you'll get a post and you'll see like a picture and a question and you got a print that looks extremely under extruded, looks, looks terrible. And the most common cause of this with a Cartesian Ender 3 style printer is when we start to develop a gap between the Bowden tube and the nozzle. They're more or less designed to be touching, if not some pressure applied to the Bowden tube, pressing against the nozzle. It's very important that we don't get any sort of air gap there. It'll cause all sorts of issues with retraction and flow. And all in all, it's just not a good thing. It's, it's almost more of an inherent design flaw with the Bowden tube going all the way through. It is convenient in the sense that you slap it together and it's ready to go. You can get good retraction with it versus like an all metal hot end. Um, like with this all metal setup here, uh, anything over five millimeters of retraction can be dangerous. You can start to develop clogs, but with that Bowden tube, um, this tube is kind of more of a natural lubricator for the filament, whereas when it's going in a metal channel, there's chances for the filament to get stuck, things like that. So there are some advantages to basically a Bowden tube through nozzle setup. Probably one of the most obvious is it's very cost effective. Um, you know, they try to make 3D printers as cheap as possible to make money. That's, that's what businesses do. It's not the best design, but it's really, with maintenance, it's, it's good. It's great for things like PLA. With Capricorn tubing, you know, a person can do PETG. I find that running at about 240 Celsius for a while still degrades even Capricorn tube. You know, you'll, you'll be doing this maybe every three months, tearing your printer down if it's printing every day. Because you'll start to get uh, a blackened and misshapen end right where it touches the nozzle. It's, it's bound to happen. You can't avoid it. So let's get down into just a general approach for maintenance here. I'm not going to go over the uh, Luke Hatfield um, technique where there's a second piece inside of the hot end and then another piece of Bowden tube that comes in and there's a washer holding that first piece in place. We're going to do that in another video. But for now we're just going to go over general maintenance here of your hot end. So I'm going to take my Allen wrench and I'm going to undo my fan shroud so I can gain access to the hot end. Got a little parts tray here. Hopefully I don't lose anything. I've already taken the liberty of undoing my zip ties here between my wire harness and my tube here. So let me go ahead and get this last bolt out. I should be able to just set this to the side. Get it out of the way. Now we have access to our hot end. And the, one of the first things I like to check is that my two bolts holding this hot end are still tight. I actually went over this a little bit before the video and I found that these were loose. So it's always a good idea to check your tension here. If this uh, hot end's loose at all and it has wiggle, you're gonna get some weird problems, possibly some clogging. So once I know that these bolts are tight, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my clip on my Bowden coupler here. Now, this has been taken apart already just to make this video quick and simple. However, there's a good chance you will depress this coupler and your tube won't come out. And what that tells you is there's probably been plastic that's leaked around the nozzle and has filled up the heat break area. And that tube sits inside of the heat break and the plastic will get this pretty much glued into place. It'll be pretty hard to remove. Just going into your preheat menu and heating up your hot end, that will allow you to remove the tube. You may pull it out and find that there's some gunk on there. 
that's pretty normal. Um, with normal operation, eventually you're going to get something in there. So the next step would be to just go ahead and take your nozzle wrench and you're going to want to also hold your heat block. And you take your nozzle wrench and you're going to remove your nozzle. I went ahead and took mine apart in advance. I am not going to use this nozzle again. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it when the time comes. Now from here, what we should do is it's a good idea just to take this coupler off to gain access inside of the hot end. And once we do that, we're going to go ahead and clean out the heat break. And generally, it's a good idea, once we get this Bowden coupler off, to simply start preheating the hot end. And you can, you know, anywhere between 200 and 240 is a good temperature. And what that's going to do is without the fan, some of this heat is going to creep into the cold side and the heat break. And then you can um, take a piece of spare Bowden tube and you can take that gunk and you can push it all the way through. Also, um, every time I stop at Walmart, I get these little pipe cleaners. They're usually for straws on like a Yeti or an Ozark. Um, what do you call those? Those basically, you know, heavily insulated mugs. These work really well too. You can just work that back and forth, get that heat break nice and clean. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a new nozzle, and then I'll be right back. We'll go ahead and start reassembly. Alright, so I got a new nozzle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start threading my nozzle in. And before I get basically all the way to the top. If we get to where we're tight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it tight and then I'm going to back it out. That is not the right nozzle wrench. <laughs> Alright, well. So, we want to get our nozzle <clears throat> to where it gets snug. And then we're going to back it out a full turn. Okay, so we're tight there. We're going to come all the way back. One turn. I'm going to reinsert my Bowden coupler here. Probably could have done that while I had the camera off. Save you guys some time. feel like that could be yeah that uh, that needs to be addressed too okay so I'm going to put my carriage all the way to the right side so as this tube gets used we need to basically trim it back and a good quality Capricorn cutter is a good way to go and I like to set my machine up to where I have enough Bowden tube to get all the way comfortably over and not a lot more so with a good quality cutter, we can make a nice straight cut. And it's very important that the end of this cut is square when it presses against the nozzle. If not, we're going to we're going to basically make an air gap from the start. So now that our new tube is cut and inserted, we're going to push it down against the nozzle. Now, it's very important that when we pull on this tube, the coupler does not allow it to move and usually I replace these pretty quickly on and I'm not getting any wiggle that's super important so now our tube is touching our nozzle and we're going to tighten our nozzle into place it's not the best tool for the job guys but I'm in the process of moving everything out to the garage 
I don't. I don't really want to go looking. So, you don't want to put a lot of tension on this, even, even with your screws going through the, the hot block back into the cold side. Um, for my final tightening, I'm not going to do it on camera, but once this is assembled, we're going to have to heat this up, and I like to go to like 240 degrees. Hold my hot block, and then I'm going to tighten this nozzle all the way down because the bore of this block will get bigger as its temperature increases and it can make it things loose. So you may think you're good and then you start printing again and all of a sudden something's wrong. Maybe that the nozzle's not tight enough. So from here, the last thing we really want to look at on our hot end is if our roller wheels are tight. So there's probably more than one thought process behind this. What I like to do is if I apply a little pressure to my carriage and I spin my wheels there should be a, just a little bit of slip and wanting to basically move. But I can already feel that this is too loose. There's more slip than there is actual motion being transferred to the gantry and that tells me that I just need to turn that eccentric nut just a little bit. So let me grab a wrench real quick and we will adjust this. All right, we got our wrench for our eccentric nut, which is on the bottom side. And I'm just gonna pick a direction. I'm really not sure which one's tightening or loosening. And I'm gonna give it about an eighth of a turn. And I can feel that I got it tighter there. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling for that little bit of resistance. I don't want the wheel to be so tight that I can't turn it by itself. But we don't want this to be loose. So that does feel pretty good. That's actually just a touch too tight. I'm gonna check this other wheel. The, the trick here is with these Durlin wheels so we don't want them so tight that they're starting to compress. That's going to add friction to our design. So when you get these just right, you're nice, you're tight. But if you block the carriage from moving and you spin the wheel, you should be able to spin it. And then when we go to move this carriage, You're going to feel a little bit of resistance from your stepper motor because it's actually regenning and creating some electricity. You can see this on uh, some printers. You can actually get your LCD screen to turn on by moving that. But that feels good. So we have a rebuilt hot end. Nothing to it. Just remember, tighten that nozzle up. Make sure that your cold end bolts are tight. Everything's in place. Just tighten that up with a little bit of heat when everything's said and done, and you should be ready to print again. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, everybody. Go ahead and please like, subscribe. Let's keep this thing going. Have a good day. Merry Christmas.